Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, today's video is going to be about uh, a really cool camera, uh, one which I've been waiting to get uh, in the complete condition for a long time and that is the Yashica 635 TLR camera with its 35mm uh, kit. So with this kit, this camera becomes either a 120 uh, film medium format camera or a 35 millimeter camera, and this allows you to explore a lot of interesting options uh, if you are uh, into film photography. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online stores, uh, japanvintagecamera.com, and my Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy this old Yashica or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So, uh, to get started, uh, this camera was introduced uh, along with the other Yashica uh, TLR cameras in the late 1950s. Yashica produced a large number of TLR cameras and they were the world's largest manufacturer of this type of camera. And uh, in order to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, make a camera which uh, would be more competitive uh, against other models at the time, especially as 35 millimeter film was becoming much more popular. Uh, they decided to produce a camera which could shoot both 120 and uh, 35 millimeter film. Uh, basically, it's like your uh, garden variety uh, Yashica B camera from that era, with much of the the same operating system and the same lenses. Uh, this camera features the 80mm f3.5 Yashikor lens, which is a simpler uh, version uh, of their lenses, uh, a three-element lens as opposed to the four-element Yashinon lens. But it seems there are a lot of people who prefer the Yashikor over the Yashinon lens. Uh, they say they produce uh, uh, images with more character and which are more interesting than what uh, you know, are produced by the more sophisticated and more expensive lens. Uh, from the front and from this side, it looks basically like your ordinary uh, Yashica B camera, but when you turn it to this side, you see a few extra controls and buttons and levers and things like that. And these are necessary to operate the, the 35mm system on this camera. So uh, I'll go ahead and go through the features, functions, and controls of the uh, Yashica 635 starting at the top. Uh, the first thing you'll notice on the top is it has a couple of studs here and these studs are for applying the 35 millimeter mask if you are using the sports finder. Uh, these, you also see these on the Yashica Rookie camera which shoots in the 6x45 uh, format so basically it's just a little bit of uh, uh, I guess using parts from the Yashica Rookie camera and a few parts from uh, the Yashica B camera to come up with this uh, uh, focusing hood system but it has this big Yashica emblem on the middle which is kind of unique uh, to other Yashica Flex cameras. Uh, if you pop open the focusing hood and you look inside, it's kind of hard to see it uh, from this viewpoint. Maybe you can see it a little better this way. Uh, this camera has focusing uh, lines for the 35mm uh, 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 kit. So, uh, of course, if you're shooting with 35mm camera in your 35mm film in a uh, medium format camera, you're going to have to be able to see what it is you're composing with, and luckily the Ashka 635 adds uh, the necessary frame lines. Uh, it has a pop-up focusing loop, just like uh, pretty much every other TLR camera of this vintage, and of course it has the sports finder, which you activate by simply pushing forward uh, the door, and to release it, there's always a, a lever on the back here, which you push one way or another, uh, that closes the door, and then you fold down the focusing loop lens or magnifier and then close the top. Always make sure to close the focusing magnifier. A lot of people manage to forget that and uh, normally it's not a big deal if you close it a little bit you'll kind of notice that it's stuck but uh, uh, you don't want to push it down you'll, otherwise you'll bend it out of shape and distort it. On the right side here we move to the uh, 120 operating system and we have a, a winding knob here and we have a film counter here and what you do when you're loading film to this you will wind it until the number one is showing in the film counter window and whenever it locks on the next frame you push the unlock button to wind it to the next frame. Uh, here we have uh, the focusing dial which has a depth of field scale around it so you know how much depth of field you have at any given aperture. And that's pretty much for the uh, it for that side. 
On the front of the camera, we have the, the basic operating system for setting the shutter and aperture settings. Uh, we have, of course, the uh, shutter speed dial here on the right side. And on this camera, we have a full range of speeds from uh, one second all the way up to one five hundredth of a second. And we have a uh, the aperture system is uh, operated on this side. We have a flash sync socket here. So if you're going to use the, the flash shoe on the side, you can use the uh, flash sync. We also have a flash selector between uh, X and M on uh, the side here. We have a self timer located on the bottom and we have the shutter release button located here. It has a uh, nut which you can remove uh, if you're going to use one of the old style uh, uh, shutter release cables. Uh, this will not use a more modern uh, shutter release cable. Uh, you can use an adapter on it which will allow you to use a modern uh, one or you can find a vintage model on eBay. And of course here we have the shutter charging lever. Okay, moving over to this side, things get a little bit more complicated because uh, we have these additional 35 millimeter accessories. So when you wind the film using the 120 side, you wind uh, this lever here and to move to the next frame, you have to push the center button. On this side, the sim operation is vaguely similar, but not exactly. Uh, we have a winder here for the 35 millimeter film and then we have a release button, which you have to depress uh, each time you wind the camera to the next film. And in the middle here, we have the release button, which you use to rewind the film. Now, uh, we have a, a kind of interesting system here. We don't have the double uh, 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 set up here what they call uh, uh, push pins for removing or putting in the film. In this camera, the 35 millimeter uh, film dial doubles as the thing you pull out to put in the film spool for the 120 uh, roll uh, film so it has uh, two purposes and on the bottom here you can pull this out to uh, put in 120 roll film and you also rotate this to rewind the film and uh, it yeah, it, it's not a complicated uh, uh, system to use, but it's, uh, you know, it, 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 of course, it's going to be a little bit different when you're using a uh, 35 millimeter film in a camera which is designed for uh, 120, or originally designed for the 120 film format. Uh, on the bottom here, we have the uh, switch which you use to unlock the uh, film door, and you can simply pop it open like so. And on the inside, it looks basically like your typical uh, 120. Uh, roll film camera. Uh, the kit, the 35 millimeter kit, uh, I was lucky enough to get this one which still has its original case, uh, says Yashica 635 on it. Uh, if you pop it open the first thing you see is the 35 millimeter uh, adapter which fits in the film, you know, I guess the film pressure plate and also the, the spacing mechanism and you have it detaches you can remove the pressure plate like so into two pieces set these aside uh, here we have the 35 millimeter mask uh, which you can use on the top of the uh, viewfinder for using the sports uh, finder and here uh, we have the take up spool for using 35 millimeter film and this would fit in the same place you would put uh, the 120 take up spool and here we have uh, adapters, which you use when you're using a 35 millimeter film cartridge. Now, uh, I happen to have a, a cartridge standing right here or sitting right here. So to operate it, you would simply put this in this side and you would put this on this side. And this allows the uh, 35 millimeter film cartridge to be fitted into the camera. I'll show you quickly how to uh, put in the conversion kit. So. Of course, the first thing you have to do is open the film door like so. I'll go ahead and set the camera in this position. You uh, take the uh, adapter here, and it has a spring-loaded bottom here which moves a little bit. So to put it in, you have to kind of push it in so it drops in like so. And you have to pull out this release lever here and rotate it, and then put it back in, and it will lock into place. So this has the, the film mask set up. You have to remove the 120 take up spool like so, and then put in the uh, 35 millimeter spool. There's a slot on here, uh, double slots, and you attach that to the 
120 film winding side and you You have to wind a couple of times to make sure to seat the mechanism and seat the gears so everything uh, rolls. You'll have to push the button here each time you turn uh, the winding mechanism. Uh, if everything is turning, uh, the spool is turning, and these gears here on either side are turning, everything is set up properly. Uh, to load the film, you have to put in the adapters on the film. I'll go ahead and do that now. and they fit in like so. Now these adapters when you were loading 120 film in a camera it's sometimes a little bit of a pain in the butt to get it lined up. Uh, for some reason the 35 millimeter one works better. Kind of a quirk of the design. So then you have to pull out the film like so and then feed it into the take up slot. Go ahead and line that up a little bit. You have to make sure it's kind of rotated all the way over to the side. And just like when loading a, a 35 millimeter camera, you want to make sure that the holes on the film are engaging the teeth on the take-up sprocket. Okay. And next you have to put in the film pressure plate. There are two holes on either side and there's a, a sign here which says up to tell you which way to put it put it in like so and that will hold the film tightly against the uh, take up uh, sprocket okay all right seems to be working so next you have to close the film door and what it says when you operate the camera to wind the film and you have to actuate it three times so I'll go ahead and push the button and wind it, push it again, wind it. This is the third time. And you can see the, the knob on the bottom is turning. So now it is set and the film is set to its uh, first frame and the camera is ready to shoot in the 35 millimeter mode. Now operating the camera is what I, you know, the same as I've described in uh, other videos. The first thing you need to do is set the exposure and you would use the exposure recommended by a handheld light meter or a light meter app on your phone or just from personal experience if you've been shooting with film for a long time or for a while and then of course uh, focusing and composing with the pop-up uh, focusing hood and magnifier and that's pretty much all there is to it now when you rewind the film in this uh, camera when you've reached all the way to the end and it won't go anymore uh, you have to rewind it using the knob here one thing I just noticed I forgot to mention was the film counter uh, dial and this works just like a Leica so what you would do uh, since I've just loaded to number one I would simply turn this to until it shows number one here and to rewind the film you have to pull out the release lever and turn it and that will lock it in the open side and then simply turn Uh, the rewind knob on the bottom and if I open the back door you'll notice that it is rewound the film and I'll go ahead and pop this out because I want to use this film in another camera and removing uh, the mechanism uh, you know the 35 millimeter mechanism is very simple it just comes out like so take off pressure plate and you can remove this part by reaching inside and pulling it downward and taking it off and uh, replace the 120 take up spool uh, when I sell one of these cameras I always make sure to include the take up spool so, so you don't have to hunt for one when you're trying to shoot the camera and then of course uh, remove the adapters make sure not to lose the adapters or the adapter parts because these 35 millimeter kits are pretty much impossible to find nowadays and if you lose anything you'll probably never be able to find replacement parts you may have to buy a complete camera kit in order to get the necessary parts and I've noticed that my the other end of my 35 millimeter adapter is still inside the camera okay 
I guess it's good. If it sticks on the inside of the camera, it's not going to get lost and, and end up somewhere else. And of course it's stuck there a little bit, so I will use a tool to help pry it out a bit. Okay, there it comes, like so. And always make sure to put all the bits and pieces back inside the storage case. Uh, this goes on the bottom. Uh, this goes with the up section facing toward the top, so the top closes down more neatly. And that's pretty much it. So. Uh, I will be listing this camera shortly in my online store, so if you're interested in buying it, uh, please, as I said, uh, check the links in the description below the video. Uh, I'm going to be moving a lot more uh, other cameras and equipment to my online store, so um, yeah, I, I have a lot of stuff which is on its way. I've got uh, more Yashica cameras, I've got a few Canonet cameras on the way, and cameras of other different makes and types, so if you're looking for any kind of uh, vintage Japanese camera, uh, please check out my uh, online stores. and. Uh, 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 hopefully you'll find something that you like. Anyway, uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please, of course, click the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.